It's called What We Learned. We do it every week. We've mm -hmm. done it for years. And Kyle, this was a big one. It was a big one. And I'm going to say the, the real losers in Super Bowl 55 were not the Kansas City Chiefs. I think in the aftermath, it is the producers and writers for radio shows and television shows because they just lost so much content for years to come in the thin days. All the Tom Brady debates are done. They're just yeah. over. There's no more coming in hungover on a Monday and be like, let's throw Brady to the phone. Is he the greatest ever? It's a dead, it's a dead tired topic. Um, anything, you, you want to go to Mitch in Des Moines on line five? He's not there anymore. He hung up. Um, all this stuff about, yeah, but Montana, no. Marino, no. Drew Brees, no. None of them. Tom Brady is the greatest ever. Um, even if you want to grasp at straws to make a radio show or TV show and go outside sports, which we've dabbled in, don't tell me LeBron. LeBron, I think he has four titles, I think. Is that what the count is right now? Um, Babe Ruth, it's it's desperate, it's it's pathetic, and I, and I respect it because it's hard to come up with content. Blame Tom Brady. A 43-year-old man threw three touchdowns against the greatest team in the league in his first season in a new conference during a pandemic and won his seventh Super Bowl in ten tries. This is the equivalent as if... Um, the Hall of Fame Major League Baseball comes out and says, you know what? We're going to let in Pete Rose. He's in. No more debate. <laughs> we're also going to end the designated hitter. Michael Jordan tweets, guys, LeBron is better than me. Oh, LeBron's I'm really, really good. I'm <laughs> conceding. He's no. better than me. It's over. The NCAA comes out and says, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to pay all college athletes, male, female, all sports. It's over. What do you do as a show? I'm sorry. Don't blame me, Tom Brady. The, the Wolfie and the Lunatic Morning Show in Clearwater, Florida. Lots of luck. Blame Tom Brady. He's your guy. Those debates are done. Those segments are over. i got to come up with something new. But the NFL should have a, a draft lottery. It's over. Uh, so They're announcing it tomorrow. They're going with a lottery, Peter. There's no topics left. Yeah. Um, it is a shame because uh, we were doing a lot of heavy lifting the last couple of weeks trying to make up arguments for Mahomes and we maybe were. for Michael Jordan. We're going to put another plate on. It's hard. Sorry. But guess what? What? I'll see you next year. <laughs> we'll get back in that saddle. Um, I learned something about the Buccaneers. Super Bowl champion Buccaneers made a lot of important acquisitions in 2020. Of course, Tom Brady, as you mentioned, is the biggest name. And additions like Gronk and Antonio Brown and Leonard Fournette, each one added long after the March free agency period, played major roles in Tampa's dream season. But there was another key acquisition, and she signed in July that had a major impact on the 2020 Buccaneers that you might not know about. July 28th, Jacqueline Davidson joined the Buccaneers front office mm. as a director of football research. And those in football circles are no stranger to Jackie's name. She spent 11 years with the Jets front office, serving multiple roles, and most notably emerged as the point person on the much celebrated Darrell Revis negotiations oh, wow. in 2009 that Hard Knocks covered so well for NFL films. She was in the chopper? Oh yeah, she was very involved, trust me. Wow. Her and Neil Schwartz Revis's agent. Davidson started out working for the league office in 2004 and initially worked for then Jets GM Mike Tannenbaum, who gave her her start, but also learned under John Idzik and Michael Cagnan. And in her final years with New York, was friendly with a head coach named Todd Bowles. Nice. In July, the Buccaneers GM, Jason Light, looked at his front office and saw a free agent on the market who had been working as a consultant for teams and agents that he wanted to add to his team. So Davidson, who is trained and schooled in salary cap, was the point person for a lot of negotiations with agents for years in New York. She's also been in the trenches with both Bowles and another former Mike Tannenbaum protege, Mikey Greenberg, who works in the Tampa Bay front mm -hmm. office. Davidson came along and made a huge impact right away. Analytics is the term that we use in football. And that's sort of what they put under her job title, but it's so much more than football research. Jason Light, the GM, described her as absolutely brilliant to me on the phone. And there were women coaches, officials, and trainers that were celebrated all the last few weeks leading up to the Super Bowl, and it's an awesome deal. There's also a woman in the Buccaneers front office who was another savvy offseason addition by that team who played a huge role in the roster construction of this squad. So get to know the name Jacqueline Davidson because she honestly could very well be the first full-time GM who is also a woman in the sport. I love it. Wow. Jackie Davidson. Oh, how rare is it? She's got some work how to do is, this How rare is it in the NFL to have a woman in that position with analytics? Very rare. Very rare. And especially having a woman on the point person dealing with some heated negotiations with the agents. Jackie's done that for years with the Jets. But here's the deal. 
and I'm not saying others do, look for the attention. She refuses all interviews. They tried doing stuff with her. She's like, I am not mm. talking to the media. You do not want to know my name. One of those deals. So if we can give a little shine to Jackie Davidson, the front office obviously would love to see her get some glow. Mm. And on our show. Jackie Davidson, you Jackie arrived. Davidson. Here you are. I, I mean, maybe Jackie Davidson is on the way out, though. Maybe she's on the way up. She don't, just won the Super Bowl. Don't laugh. Yeah, I'm not. And when the Jets let her go, it was a lot of people around the league were shaking their heads and saying, well, that's just, that's ridiculous because she's as good as she is. So Tampa Bay got another great one. Better hold on to her. Absolutely. <laughs> mm. And Jets fans are saying, oh, there's yep, another person we'll that laugh. walked out our door we'll that we'll went on mm-hmm. to have success somewhere else. She's going to have a busy offseason, too. Her and Todd Bowles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they've got to keep some of that talent yes, there. They Obviously, Shaq Barrett's a free agent, so he'll be one of them. But, you know, when you're talking about, you know, I'm here to learn. Sure. And, you know, I, I go back to my oh, movie sure. references, right? <laughs> When you're a kid yeah. and you're at school and you're like, why do I have to learn this? Why do I, am I going to use this later on in sure. life? You know, or, I mean, it's The Pythagorean math. theorem. It's, you know, right, right, right. Sign, Quadratic cosine. formula. Why am I going to need to know that? No, you need to know this stuff. You know why? Because football is still elementary. So just like all the stuff that our kids are learning in school right now, here is what is elementary. And, and here's what we learn. Blocking is essential. There yes, I know go. Tom Brady and our quarterbacks <laughs> are important. Yes, you got to have a great quarterback, you got to have a great offense. But still, what we learned is that defense wins championships. Yeah. And if you can't block them, you got no shot. There we so go. The Kansas City Chiefs, to your point, you look at what this Bucks defense did to them. All right, here is what we learned defense will still take you out. All right, I don't care if you're Patrick Mahomes. I don't care if you're Neo from the Matrix <laughs> yeah, and you is. can whip this ball and bend it around different corners. If you can't block, if you can't keep your quarterback in the pocket, you got JPP dancing over there while your quarterback's getting sacked, you got problems. Look out. And oh. this is still the way to take down a team. And we saw it live, up front, up close and personal. Mahomes getting crunched right there. Hey. We've seen this movie before. Here all right, go. here's a rerun that we all love watching over and over again. You can't leave the house. It's like when the Big Lebowski comes on, you're not going anywhere. Sean, that's you, not everyone. This is Jay Alford, a rookie, <laughs> sacking Tom Brady. I mean, they made Tom Brady's life miserable in Super Bowl 42. It was that mantra. This was the number one offense in the history of the NFL. In Super Bowl 42, and yet the defense held them to 14 points. So, uh, you know, we're still learning. You know, we go, we always, we we always kind of circle around. Oh, you got to have all these athletes. You got to have a great quarterback. But it still comes down to, if you have a great defense, you always have a shot at winning a football game, especially if you can't block them. So, get some offensive linemen, people. Woo! If you don't have, if you don't have an offensive lineman in your life, you're not winning. Get some offensive linemen. It's great. It's incredible.